Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a new thriller reading vlog. So I have three new thrillers that I wanted to check out and read and react, react to for you guys. Wow. I can't speak English. Um, so those three books are The Haters by Robin Harding, Home is Where the Bodies Are by Geneva Rose, and The Unraveling by Vi Keeland. So those are the three books that I'm going to be reading and reacting to. I have not had the best track record with thrillers as of lately, and I haven't really been reading a ton the past few months. So I'm curious to see how I'm going to feel about these. We'll see. There might be some ranting. There might be some surprises. I don't know. Show off. Gotta show off the Jeff R. Curie merch. I saw him live and I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with this man. He is my favorite freaking comedian. He was so funny. His crowd work is chef's kiss. This is just the back. The back got to show off the back. <laughs> I'm just, I'm so happy. I love him so much. You guys know comedy is my favorite thing ever. So I'm so excited that I got to see him. But anyways, it is Saturday today. Um, it's like late in the afternoon. I just started reading The Haters by Robin Harding. I have an arc of this and it comes out in like three days. Um, so basically this book, like Robin Harding is kind of hit or miss for me. I think her last book, what was it? The Drowning Woman. Um, I think I gave that one three stars. I like really loved it. And then the second half kind of just went downhill for me. Um, so yeah, she could be hit or miss, but uh, this one here is about an author, so um, she comes out with her debut book, it kind of blows up, and um, she gets an email basically being like, so she's um, a counselor for a school, she has a teenage daughter, and basically um, there she gets this email from this woman basically being like your book is trash how dare you like you took inspiration from your students and you exploited them and blah 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 like some nasty email right and the thing is like she immediately is so distraught by this email and she's constantly like s thinking about this email and freaking out about it and like I get it because someone's mean to you you know it, it happens to the best of us until you kind of learn to ignore those things and ignore those comments from people who are miserable like they do they get to you so I get it but the fact is <laughs> this is like really bizarre because so she gets this nasty email but then she um automatically thinks that this woman is stalking her like for literally no reason at all <laughs> Like she sees someone coming up to her at a book signing and she's like, oh, it's the woman that sent me an email. Like she has no reason to believe so far that this woman is stalking her, right? But like she is, but she doesn't, I don't, I'm like, where is she getting this intuition from? She sees like, you know, her one star review on Goodreads or whatever. And next thing you know, she has a whole bunch of one star reviews. And this woman's like encouraging people to give this book one star. And like some weird, creepy things are happening now. Um, and she obviously thinks that this woman's stalking her. Yeah, that's what's going on with this book so far. And then we are getting some chapters here and there from her book that she wrote. So she wrote um, this book about this woman with a very troubled life. Yeah, that's that. She's trying to figure out who this person is that's leaving her these nasty little messages. And um, it's okay so far. I like it. I'm intrigued. I'm only like 50 some pages. So I really want to see where this goes. Um, I will probably just like walk on my walking pad and try to read a little bit more before dinner. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't really have any complaints other than the fact that I'm like, where is she thinking that this woman is stalking her from? But yeah, so we'll see. I 
it's been so long since I've read like a good thriller and like I do really want to get back into thrillers here and there but it's like so rare that I find a good one because it seems like all the popular ones that I've been reading lately have just been like miss after miss after miss and really the only one that I liked so far this year was Strange, Strange Sally Diamond by Liz Nugent and I do still plan on doing like a backlisted um, reading vlog but I'm, I'm hoping some of these thrillers um, do it for me, but we'll see. I'm in a, in a reading slump right now, and like I was thinking, oh, thriller would probably be a good genre for me to pick up, just something quick and easy. So this is like the kind of book that I should be reading right now, so it feels right, you know? <laughs> so we'll see. Um, yeah, I'm, like I said, gonna go walk, gonna eat got some like video and patreon stuff to um like edit and oh my god i'm having so much fun on patreon you guys have no idea i'm having so much fun i love my patrons so much we chat all day long in discord pretty much like most of the day we're chit chatting um you know I'm, i have my live show we're reading night shoot by david sodergren this month and you know I've been posting some polls and and posts on there and we just we're having a fun time a lot of thriller girlies a lot of um unhinged sad girls <laughs> and I'm getting some like thriller wrecks I'm getting some sad girl wrecks and I I'm just having so much fun with you guys they're so sweet we share pictures of our pets like <laughs> honestly I just I love them so much and of course my patreon's always in the description if you want to join us but um yeah it's just like positive vibes it's a good time and I'm looking to like add some more things into the tiers like we really want to do um like we're, we're doing a lot of buddy reads outside of the book club so that's fun um i really want to do maybe like a movie night um maybe some sprints someone mentioned like i i'm not changing the prices but i'm probably going to be adding additional stuff into there so make sure you check out my patreon shameless self promo but i like genuinely i, I love them so much i'm having such a good time so yeah i'm gonna go and then i'll get back to you when i'm a little bit further along it's Sunday if I look disheveled I just fell asleep on my couch for like forever I <laughs> it's three o'clock I'm like how did this happen um I went to the farmer's market this morning had to stop at the grocery store for like a few things and I came home and I've been like doing laundry and stuff I have to finish editing a video but I did manage to get a little bit further into the haters I'm on page 146 right now I love like floppy paperbacks this is the arc version and I I love this book so anyways um how I'm feeling about the actual book it's still okay I mean I don't really have any complaints it's just you know this like stalker is getting more and more personal and now she's like really diving into who could be doing this and trying to put the pieces together it's not bad I'm not obsessed like I, I just feel neutral about it so far so it really just depends how the rest of this book goes um we'll see like I'm still intrigued it's still an easy read I still want to keep reading so that those are all good signs because I feel some type of way about a lot of thrillers so far I don't know it's pretty good it's decent I like it I don't have any any complaints crazy I know right it just has a lot of commentary about like internet trolls and how like marginalized um, groups of people and individuals are targeted more uh, by trolls than say men 
So, I mean, I kind of, I kind of like that discussion, and um, we're gonna see where it goes. Hello. So it's Tuesday. So I did finish the haters uh, yesterday morning. So we're gonna talk about it, and then I started. Home is where the bodies are. So let's chit chat for a little bit. So I finished this book. I ended up really liking it. It was a little, I don't want to say YA. It wasn't YA. It was like almost a little juvenile. I don't know because there's a lot of um, teenagers in this book because, you know, our main character has a teenage daughter and she's um, a counselor in school for teens and you know this book that she wrote we're getting chapters from it that has to do with teens so it almost felt like there was a little too much like teen drama for my liking but I still ended up really enjoying it I just liked the overall theme of this author getting canceled and you know like the commentary of the trolls online and social media and basically how there are two sides to every story and how this story was like spun and how everyone just kind of jumped on the bandwagon and was like yeah let's cancel this author you know and it's like there's always i don't know like there i'm i am such a libra you guys <laughs> I am a Scorpio but I'm a Libra rising and like there's a lot of Libra in my birth chart and like you can tell if there's like something that's wishy-washy that we don't know all the facts I'm very like I'm not picking sides like hee hee <laughs> peace and love you know what I mean so yeah I ended up enjoying this I was entertained I liked it I don't like how I don't know the story chapters like from her book were fine but like I feel like they didn't really serve a purpose like it was just kind of weird to put them in there like they served a little bit of a purpose but it didn't need to be done um so yeah I just I don't know like did we need those chapters no but it was a quick easy read and I have been in a reading slump so I just feel like this is something that I needed so I gave this four stars if I didn't say that already then I started Home is where the bodies are and I got about 88 pages I love this <laughs> I do I love this so far this is like a very slow burn mystery like slow burn family drama dynamics oh also by the way that the haters I felt like there was a lot of drama I don't know I'm someone that likes drama in their thrillers like drama relationship family friend drama rich people drama like neighborhood drama that's what I like in my thrillers by the way I'm not like action guns chasing no that doesn't work for me so that one was full of drama this one full of drama but this one is really really well written so far so basically we're following these three siblings if you don't already know so we have um beth who's been kind of like taking care of her mom and we have michael who is rich and doesn't really associate with his family and then we have nicole who is um an addict and Basically their mom passes away and Beth is there and the mom dies and she's her last words were your father didn't disappear don't trust and then she passed away right so we're like what what the hell does that mean and um, her their father like disappeared like he basically took off and left and they never heard from him again and um so these three siblings come back together and you're learning about them and like their fucked up family dynamics and their grief and their depression and like you're learning about these characters and i just i love that so much i love um just like learning about families and like you really get to know you know this this family and their dynamic and I really love and appreciate that so much um and I love a good slow burn like you really don't the, the thriller aspect of this book doesn't kick in until like 70 pages or so so basically these three siblings get back together after their mom passes away because they have to do you know like legal stuff it reminds me of like how to sell a haunted house by Grady Hendrix um just like that 
initial family drama grief. Um, so they get together and they find a box of VHS tapes and they put one of the tapes in and here it's their parents their dad is covered in blood and he's like, oh, it's an accident, it was an accident. And there's a dead body of a girl laying there. So now they're like, what the fuck? Like, what What do we do? What? What is going on? What happened in this video, right? Like, what happened to this girl? So that is this book and you're just following them trying to figure out the situation and you're also getting some past chapters from the 90s from the mom um, as, you know, leading up to these events. So I really like that. Overall five of this book, I'm loving so far. I don't, am I, do I love thrillers again? Like what is happening to me? I don't know, but this is very short. It's only 250 pages. I almost want to try to finish this today if I can. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So I think I'm about halfway like literally I'm halfway through this book and I'm still liking it. I, I like this slow burn kind of exploration of this family and it feels a little more serious in tone compared to like her other books where I feel like this one reads with this like overall melancholy sadness to it where like you can kind of like feel their feelings and what's going on um, in this family. So I'm still really liking it. It is very slow. It is a little bit predictable so far, but I mean, you know, I'm halfway, so I'm gonna see, um, how I feel throughout the rest of the book. I'm like, what is wrong with me? I like thrillers again? I'm sick of horror and I like thrillers again? Am I turning into my old basic self? I don't know. What is happening? Okay, so I'm now 70% through this book. Uh, I'm gonna try my best to finish it tonight. I have a really bad headache and I'm starting to get dizzy because my neck is so screwed up. Um, so we'll see how far I get. But it's kind of starting to drag a little bit. I mean, it's been dragging a little bit. Um, like there are things that happen that I don't see coming that are exciting but then there are other things where like not enough is happening or like things will happen and I'm like oh yeah that makes sense like I could see that you know so I mean it feels okay I don't I, I still like it I'm still entertained it's just like I'm not obsessed with it anymore like it's just been dragging it's a very slow burn kind of book so um we'll see uh, of course you know i'm in the mood to read sad girl books now every time i re do one of these like themed vlogs where i'm reading like one genre consistently it just doesn't work out for me because i'm always like oh i really want to read like a sad lit fic book <laughs> i literally um placed another book order today for more sad girl books so now i'm like oh i can't wait to read my sad girl books <laughs> And now I'm like, Ugh, I hate having a TBR because now I have like books lined up for videos and I'm like, but I don't want to read these anymore. Check out the bread box. I know such a weird thing to be showing. I just built this. I'm obsessed with sourdough from the farmer's market <laughs> and I never had a spot to like put the bread because they just put it in a paper bag and then it gets stale. So I got a bread box and I'm like, very excited about this for literally no reason. Please just like watch this video without looking at me. Just listen to me because the way that I look right now, ah, I did not feel like getting ready this morning. Whatever. Anyways, I just finished uh, Home is Where the Bodies Are. I don't even know where my copy is. I think it's in the bedroom. But I finished this last night before bed and I really ended up enjoying it. It's like I really really loved it and then it kind of dipped a little bit in the middle and then I got really invested again and the ending like the big reveal was slightly disappointing like it was ridiculous I think all thrillers are ridiculous though and that's not really the point um some of them are just more so ridiculous than others I think this one was a little bit predictable but 
I still enjoyed it like I still thought it was entertaining and I think her writing has improved so much like her other books are kind of like eh, but this one was really well written and I don't know like I can see her getting better and better so I gave this one four stars I ended up really enjoying it and it also had some good quotes too like let me read you just like a little quote here and there. I spent my whole life being nervous up until I realized that life happens in between the beats of our own heart and if it thumps too fast there's no space for us to live. No one lives here anymore but it holds a memory of the girl who called it home. That girl no longer exists. As we age we shed layers of ourselves disintegrating like any other organic material but some of us just break down faster than others. Like I don't know her writing is just is, it was good for a thriller. I was impressed I guess I don't know this book seems to be very hit or miss but a lot of people seem to be liking it than not liking it so yeah I would recommend this one giving it four stars very entertaining um I actually think I'm going to take a little break from this video I started uh perfume and pain with the patrons and we're doing a little buddy read we have like <laughs> so many buddy reads going right now but i'm obsessed with this this is like weird unhinged girl lip fic obsessed i would give anna dorn my social security number i'm so excited i'm vlogging this for patreon and ah! Ah, it's so good it's so good Hello, hello. So I wanted to start Kill For Me, Kill For You, but I read like a chapter and it was like guns and I was like, I, I just can't do this right now. <laughs> and the second I see a gun in a book, I'm just like over it. I don't like action. I don't like guns. And I'm like worried, is this going to be too action-y for me? So I decided the third and final book that I'm reading for this vlog, because I'm a little bit thrillered out, uh, will be The Unraveling by by Keyland. I just got this in my Arvark book box. So I'm very curious to see how I feel because this was kind of like a little add on that I did that I wasn't so sure about. But I honestly don't even know what this book is about because listen to this synopsis. It says this isn't a love story. It's a story about obsession. That's the reason why I purchased this. I was like sold. <laughs> You'll assume you know who the object of obsession is. The psychiatrist concealing the twisted connection she has to her patient. Or maybe her patient isn't as innocent as he seems. But more than one person hides a secret. To what length to what lengths will desire and grief drive a person? Stop guessing, let the mystery unravel. It's so mysterious and like that's exactly how this book is written. So we're following this woman who's a psychiatrist and in the beginning of the book she's following a man and she's like, oh he looks so happy now. And I'm like, who is this man that she's like stalking? And she's taking notes about him. And then she goes to a psychiatrist and um, it's mandatory. Like she was mandated to start seeing the psychiatrist. So we know like something is, has gone on, right? And, um, you know, she admits to like following this man and that, you know, uh, X, Y, and Z happened to him and his family. And like, she's been following him. And I'm like, who is this guy? And it's someone from her past, I guess. And she like doesn't want him to see her. I think it's like a patient that she saw. And that's all that we really know. I'm on page 44. And um, we also learn like she was married before and is no longer. So we're getting past chapters about her and her husband. And I I'm very intrigued by this book. I think it's very well written so far. It's very mysterious. It's written in a way where it's like, you know, absolutely nothing. And then slowly, she feeds you little bits and pieces of information. So I'm actually very intrigued by this. It's like drama, salacious, scandalous. <laughs> I feel like this is like a Scorpio book so far. Very mysterious. Yeah. Um, a couple people told me that the ending is not quite up to par and that I'm probably going to be mad at the ending. So we'll see. It is short. It's only like 280 some pages. So I'm hoping to get a good chunk into this. I'm actually about to leave. I have to go see the movie Long Legs. So I'm really excited because the entire internet has not shut up about this damn movie. So I'm going to set the record straight. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really liking this. 
So I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared to find out. Okay, so it's Sunday morning. I've been breathing for a while. And uh, please excuse my appearance. Uh, my allergies are killing me and my face is swollen and I feel terrible. But um, I got a little more than halfway through this book and I'm on page 164. And uh, it kind of took this direction that I didn't want it to go in. Like it just got really... <sighs> I don't know, like page 70 ish is when we found out like what is going on. And it's just kind of building from there. It's all drama. It's like salacious drama scandal, but like kind of in a romancy way. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I like where this is going. We'll see. I'm kind of getting bored. It's kind of just okay for me. It feels like a three star for me. We'll see where it goes, but I'm kind of like, oh, this is taking a little direction that I didn't want it to go in. I wanted it to be a little more shocking than this, but it's kind of like, it all makes sense. And this main character is such an idiot. Like, she is so dumb. Oh my God. She is just making such terrible decisions and I'm sick of her. <laughs> so... That's how I'm we feeling. We need to talk. We need to talk because I have some screaming to do. I have some screaming to do. But before we do that, um, let me just say, Long Legs was a fucking masterpiece. I loved it so much. I was fully expecting to go into this movie theater and coming out and being like, oh, that was overhyped crap. And I was obsessed. And I was obsessed because... Not that I was like scared or anything. It's very like creepy, but like a slow burn crime kind of thriller. I don't know. It's like quiet horror. And I fucking loved it so much because it's the only movie that actually like sustained my attention in years. Like I am someone that doesn't pay attention to movies ever. I have a really hard time paying attention. I have ADHD. Like I, I can't sit still. I'm like permanently cracked out all the time. That's just how I am. And the fact that a movie actually sustained my attention long enough where I was like paying attention and actually understanding what was going on, it's a miracle, right? So I am obsessed. I am obsessed with Longlegs himself. Um, I thought he was fucking hilarious. I. It was so well done. It was so well done. I'm obsessed. I made it my new personality. If you follow me on Instagram, I've been making memes all the time because there's something psychologically wrong with me. And I loved that movie so much. I really did. And I don't care. I will not apologize. I will not like change my mind because someone told me it's not that good. You know, I'm very unapologetic with everything that I love and I fucking loved it. So yeah, it slapped. It slapped. It fucking slapped. Okay. Um, anyways, I need to scream. You know, the scene in long legs where he's like, mommy, daddy in the car. That's me right now because I need to be saved. Save me! <laughs> I cannot be screaming like this or my neighbors are going to be calling the office. <laughs> but we need to talk because this is one of the worst books I've ever read in my life. I th This felt like a five star in the beginning. And then towards the middle, I was like, oh, maybe three star. This is a one star book. It just kept going downhill, like worse and worse and worse and worse and worse for me. This is the most boring, predictable, ridiculous, stupid fucking thrillers I've ever read in my life. I'm sorry, my hair is not doing what I want it to do. Like, this book is so stupid. So it's like, I don't want to give anything away in case you want to read it. But like, this whole like weird Fifty Shades of Grey smut was going on. And then it was like, very predictable. Like I was like, oh. and then this woman kept putting herself in like dangerous situations because of a hot guy. And I'm like, why? I'm so sick and tired of like dumb female characters in thriller books. They always have these like dumbed down, stupid characters that just act crazy for ridiculous reasons. Like there were so many dangerous situations that she kept putting herself in because she's like, well, this guy's hot. 
why like it's kind of insulting to women <laughs> I'm not even kidding like it's kind of insulting when thrillers do this like they keep doing this like what is with the stupid women trope I don't understand it it's driving me insane and like actually it's very unrealistic because I feel like more women nowadays are very cautious of men and their surroundings and like where are we getting these like stupid weak female leads from like I just it doesn't make sense to me her she was a hot mess and I was like for a fucking doctor for a psychiatrist this woman is a fucking hot mess like she can't read the room like she's dumb as hell dumb as hell and then we get to like the big like twist or the reveal at the end it was predictable because it was like okay there aren't that many people in this book there were like two other people mentioned in this book so I was like obviously something's going on there stupid it ended up being so stupid at the end and then I'm like what is with the last chapter the everyone lives happily ever after the end I am so sick and tired of books like this this is like pretty much the reason why I stopped re reading thrillers I am so sick and tired of the stupid twist the stupid females the stu like the dumb ridiculous bullshit the predictability the it was it, it was just also so boring and then like the whole like unrealistic romance smut trope thrown in there I just I could not stand this book this is one star trash to me I'm done reading thrillers for a few months now I'm going back to my sad girl books and I'm ending this video and possibly no I'm not gonna go there <laughs> I was gonna say a joke that probably would have landed me in a psych ward um so yeah I'm gonna go now <laughs> that's it I thought that I was maybe liking thrillers again but um the answer is no I'm not I'm straight up not having a good time see you in my next video <laughs>